wow, I can't believe we're actually at the end of 2013 in this review series. We are, like, flying through Motu figures at this point. And at the end of 2013, there were definitely some odd figures showing up in your mailbox or collected at local conventions. And there were some definitely grumblings from the fan base about which figure was winding up in which subscription. So we had two subs at this point, Club Filmation and the Club Eternia. And we had two Filmation characters that month. We had Plundor, the purple space rabbit. And we had Strong Or, or rather Strong Arm, as he's known in the show, a orange and blue cyborg. And there were fans, for their reasons, who felt that Plundor was, well, silly looking. What, a space bunny that's purple is silly bucking? Looking? Did I say bucking? Silly bucking. It's not even a thing. All right, silly looking. You know, well, a cartoon rabbit. That's basically what they felt they were getting. But, you know, I kind of hate to pull the, well, here you go evidence card, but, you know, big cartoony Muppet-like eyes are part of the Motu brand. And while uh, our space rabbit wound up being part of the main sub for multiple reasons, both from a logistics, sculpting, and legal reasons, well, we still had strong arm, and that meant he was going to be part of Club Filmation. It was going to close out our line of characters for the year, celebrating the 1980s animated show and the fact that we now had rights to include them in the line. So our big, giant, orange, and purple, silver, spiked... God, this guy just, like... I mean, does he look 80s or what? But, you know, I mean, the 1980s at this point was part of pop culture, and giant muscles were part of that. So a guy named Strong Arm with, you know, giant 80s features does feel appropriate to be part of He-Man. I mean, after all, He-Man was designed to be made of muscles. That was literally the concept behind him. So, yeah, a character named Strong Arm in the He-Man line? What a shocker. All right, so... His, uh, his feature naturally should have been an extending arm, which makes sense, and if he'd ever had a figure released in a line that was able to include action features, I'm sure this would have been done. There's a lot of extending arm features. Just see any Reed Richards action figure, or, you know, they've even had Wolverine with pop-out claws. I'm using way too many Marvel examples here, but, you know, there are toys that are non-Marvel out there, I hear. But in order to compensate for the lack of being able to afford a mechanical mechanism, we included an extending arm piece. So you simply popped one off, popped on the long version, and boom, you had the long extending arm of Strong Arm, complete with his awesome smile. Now, why Strong Arm over all of the many, many, many characters that were possible through Filmation? Previous to 2012, we didn't have rights to the Filmation library, which meant we were only focusing on characters that had been in either 2000X or had a vintage toy or were from mini-comics, those kind of things. And Filmation really opened the door because there are literally hundreds and hundreds of additional characters that are now available to put into the line. So a lot thought was into this, and some of the, uh, I guess, Rationale was, well, is the character going to look cool next to other characters? Will he fit in, or she, or it, in the case of a robot? But we also wanted to look at color schemes and picking figures that were really going to pop. Finally, we also looked at customs, because when fans make a custom of a character, that tends to be the ultimate sign of, I wish this toy actually existed. And, believe it or not, well, actually, yes, believe it, because here's some visuals, Strong Arm shows up quite a bit as far as a custom figure in different, uh, well, different versions. Carded versions, loose versions, different scales. So yeah, that really became a good way of figuring out which Filmation characters to focus on. And like I said, color-wise, he really popped. We didn't really have too many orange wearing characters, orange wearing characters, characters wearing orange. I should really work on word order. And the thing about the animated look is while we wanted them to reflect the animation, they weren't meant to be animated characters or animated versions the way, say, the Club Grayskull line was a direct animated line. But at the same time, we weren't sure how deep Club Grayskull was going to be able to get. It was always designed to be a way to re-release the main characters because they sold so much better than everyone else. So when doing Filmation characters in the more classic style, in the, in the main sub, if you will, we were very conscious of making them so they would kind of 
work for the Filmation line, but they could also work for Classics because the film, the Club Grayskull line, which Super 7 carried on after uh, I left Mattel, was always really meant to be a vehicle for main characters. So secondary characters like Strong Arm here, or Strong Or, and we'll get to that in a moment with the name issue, was meant to kind of straddle the fence between animated look and classic look, more or less, leaning maybe a little bit more towards classic, because, I mean, it was released in the Club Eternia, or well, actually, this was Club Filmation, but same thing. It was very similar to what we did years earlier with the Batman and Superman Public Enemies line with Mattel for the DC Warner Brothers property. Warner Brothers really wanted Mattel to put out a line to celebrate this direct-to-DVD release, and while we were excited to do this, we were concerned with standalone characters that weren't going to work with anything else you owned. So it was going to be this like weird little pocket line of figures. So outside of Batman and Superman, which we were, you know, we went a little bit more animated with, the secondary characters, like the villains, we wanted to make sure that, much like I was describing with the Filmation characters, while they would absolutely reflect and be on model to the animated look, in this case from the direct-to-DVD animation, they would work with the main line too. So Silver Banshee here, kind of also a figure that deliberately, and I remember talking to the Four Horsemen about this, finding a way to get it to, again, straddle the fence between an animated look and a classic look. All right, I said we needed to talk about this character's name, and, well, that's what we're going to do right now. So, originally, this character in the animation was Strong Arm, which, again, you know, the 1980s, Strong Arms became, you know, embedded in pop culture with, uh, you know, Rambo and Schwarzenegger and, you know, all that stuff, Dolph Lundgren. The problem was is that Hasbro already owned Strong Arm. It was the name of a Transformer, which meant the name was not available. This happens a lot, and this is actually why... Hasbro has a lot of Transformers and G.I. Joes with the same name, because once you own a name, you want to maximize it, because it costs money to not only trademark and take out the name legally, but to maintain it. You have to keep it on shelf every few years. If you don't, you lose it. So reusing old names is very common. We had a similar issue in 2001 with the Fisto figure from the He-Man vs. Snake Men line, where he had to be renamed Battle Fist, because the original name of the character, Fisto, from the 1980s, was no longer available for the exact same reason, because there was another action figure out with this name. And uh, since then, well, when we did Fisto in Classics, Mattel was able to get the name back, probably again because Lucasfilm Hasbro allowed that name to slip. Alright, so... Those are kind of all the rationale for why the character got into the line and why we had to rename him from Strong Arm to Strong Or, because, you know, adding O-R to any name in Motu makes it Motu. I also have to talk about the weapon, because I love his weapon. It's one of my favorite guns we ever did. What can I say? Futuristic, and I, I, I love rings. I love when they put rings around things to make them, you know, look all 1930s futury. It's just one of my favorite looks. Hey, did that guy just say rings are cool? And that's basically everything about Strong Or. You know, why he wound up in the line, why he wound up in that club, and the chance of getting another figure like this may be slim to none. So enjoy your classic Strong Or. He's kind of one of a kind.